Was the decision to launch your political ambitions originally part of this entire program, this convention? No. The convention generally was put together because this was what we wanted people to already capacity my okay. network what i can do what i can bring to the country what i can add to the people and then based on that when we finally unveil they connect us together okay so that's what i wanted to establish was were you going to unveil the new africa movement and, and yourself as in the man behind the mask on that day of the event at the black star square I, what is, I wasn't planning to do so. I only did that at the press conference because there was, there was so much pressure. I felt a little bit humiliated, but not by a person or a group, but an entire country. Because then I brought those people and it looks like everyone had turned their back on me. You know, whether it's the leaders or the government or the nation or the people. So I felt humiliated and I thought that, is it because of the mask issue? That's why all of this is happening. Mm -hmm. And I thought that, well, how can the mask scare people to that extent that, you know, they will restrict me from doing so many things and start deporting people and doing this and just saying that it's all about the mask. So mm -hmm. I was pushed, but spiritually also I felt the voice that talks to me saying that, just take it off. If that's the problem, take it off. So they can so see it was that a spontaneous it's, decision. Yeah, not one that was thought through. You at the press conference, you just decided that you know what, I'm frustrated. Let me let me just. Let I'm not frustrated. Know. I was not frustrated. I okay. don't frustrate myself over situations like this, and I don't like to get frustrated. I like I to see. find a solution for frustration before it even occurs. However, mm -hmm. I was disappointed. I felt that I'm being humiliated. I felt that I am being pushed aside, including the people that had been to Ghana and. You know, I heard the rumors that uh, it's for unveiling something, something, something. But how important is this unveiling for us? No, that's what I wanted to establish, whether the unveiling of your political ambitions was originally part of this convention event as communicated to the Office of Diaspora Affairs at the Office of the President. No. You say that it wasn't, no, and you were I mean, not going to. Look, unveil your, your identity and your, your ambitions. I think I have already answered mm -hmm. that question, but I'll answer it again for you, okay? The initiative of bringing these people together was for inspiration, it was for motivation, and was for now using their voice to ignite around Africa the reason why and how we should govern our countries and how we should take hold of our resources, human resources, and our mineral resources. Of course, that is the preaching that I'm doing with my movement. Okay. That, you know, we have to make best use of our resources, the human resource and okay. the mineral resources. So, so this is, please, mm -hmm. this is the main reason why the event, okay. you know, was happening. But all these rumors that are coming from places mm -hmm. could have been the reason that led to this to be cancelled. Mm -hmm. So I was just thinking that, if that is the reason, then why are people thinking that you're being kept in a suspense for this mask who is behind it? Mm. So I had to. That's why you, that, you yes. unveiled your identity. Identity. I, um, it wasn't planned. I didn't have any speech for it. You know, I just had to speak at that okay. very moment, you know. And I don't want to say that I was pushed to the wall to do it. But also the voices were telling me that. Just do it. And as you can see... There is no harm, okay. and there was no crime right. in, so, in so all the, of this. The, the, the New Africa f movement, so it's, it's, it's a movement and not a political party? No. First of all, the New Force. The New Force. The New Force, mm -hmm. it's a movement. The movement is the freedom movement. The person that... Freedom movement. Yes, that is standing behind, in front of the movement is me. But I'm looking for the best people in the country who are even better and much better than me. To be a part of this as well, we need to form the new six. We need to form the new narrative that would govern the generation that is coming, okay? okay. We, we need to be able to take hold of our resources and, and, and use them, you know, for manufacturing and create employment so we can build a middle class. Now that 
mm. has nothing to do with politics at this point. The only reason why we are running is because we have to be in the picture mm. to either win the presidency so we can fix these narratives or we have to become uh, the historical political disruptor mm -hmm. to be able to have a negotiation chip to bargain for this middle class economy to be inserted in the entire country's plan of development, mm -hmm. not just uh, social development, but also human development, you know, creating the jobs in all the regions. That is what the movement is about. So are you going to seek alliances with other political parties as well? I mean, thinking about building that kind of human resource that you're talking about, you want to, you want to contest in elections. Mm -hmm. Is it 2024 or 2028? You saw it. <laughs> you're asking me a question that you've seen already, Fred. <laughs> I don't know, but you've seen the billboards. Uh, I don't know why you're not showing some, but it clearly oh, says... Uh, <laughs> oh, you mean the one with you on it? Or the no, one no, 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 the, 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 the one with my face on it. You know, it clearly so, says it there. Oh, you can show some of those pictures. Bidiaco for president. It didn't say 2028. It said clearly 2024. That, that, you know, being wanting to be president is, is serious business. I mean... Oh. Why is this serious business? It's also a position for human beings. It's not a position for God. God gave us that position. You know, why are we thinking like this as a nation? Okay, it's a position. And it's a position when you take it, you become responsible for a nation and a country. You're not supposed to be responsible for campaign for the chair. Okay? Mm -hmm. That is the responsibilities. And that position is not for uh, a special human being that is thrown from up above to come and do that. It's one of us. In, in fact, I was just building up to a point I was going to make, but you you understood the question in the way that you wanted to. But uh, it's just because after you, you did the announcement, a number of people have been questioning whether you're really serious about this. Because you know, yes, you you've chalked some successes for yourself, you know, as as a private businessman and all the investment that you have made. But that is very different from running a country that has over 31 million people looking up to you. To, to provide leadership. That is very different. That's why I say that being president is serious business. It is that context in that question and that I, I asked. And you. I understand you clearly, Alfred. You know, when Moses had to lead these Israelites, he was not born to lead them. The reason why he led them and why God chose him was because of the courage. The reason why I'm sitting in front of you telling you that I'm running for president is because I've gathered the courage and the confidence to stand up and say that, yes, I'm one of the people that can lead this country. Now, it's fine. I can be underrated, underestimated, but it's fine. It's always good to mm -hmm. start from somewhere. And along your journey, you learn more. The people that learn from the greatest mistake will realize that the greatest people were not born great. Rather, they grew great. And it's because of appreciation of greatness. And I've appreciated a lot of great people in this world. You know, that what they do significantly has impacted society. And we have to stand on these things to build ourselves. You know, um... So this is the billboard you're talking about? Oh, yes. Nana Kwame Bidiako for president. Yes. Yeah, we'll put that on the screen right, right now. But when did you start nursing this ambition to, to, to lead the country as president? Uh, it was just this year. You this know? year? Yeah. I mean, we are, we are what? Sorry, Ele last year. Days La no, last year, I'm sorry. It was just last year. I still felt From like... From 2023? Yeah, yeah. I had a dream. You had a dream. And a dream when I woke up, I decided to, first of all, form a political party and then uh, start my agenda. So it was like a calling. And that calling... I realized that I had to do some work. So I read the constitution and I read a little bit. I don't know anything about politics whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't even know how to become an assemblyman. In fact. And, and, and I said that this is what I'm going to do. I didn't say I want to become an MP and try to become a minister to become a president. I went straight for the seat because that's what God said, that go for it. It's your time. Go for it. So I started to study about the Constitution, and I realized that there were so many gaps. There were clauses in the Constitution that would stop any wise, successful person in the country to become a part of our governance, okay? Because it, it says that they will take you to prison even if you've mixed paying one of your taxes, and I'll sue you t uh, two million and this and that. And then it, so it, it, it kind of scares us, you know? And I think if I didn't take that decision, I wouldn't have read the Constitution that, you know, the EC is 
given to us, you know. And I realized that it still had some kind of colonial um, um, influence in, in, in the Constitution. However, they say it's written by us. So I said, okay. I started my journey. And... Um, I realized that the kind of things that I had to do to have a political mm -hmm. party, you know, was quite tough. That I, I had to get these offices in the regions mm -hmm. and build this and build that. But yes, of course, I started. I did all of that. And I submitted. And um, You have offices in all 16 regions? All 16 regions. The, all, the, I did the, the work. Force. Yes. We did the work. We went. We were quiet. We started working. We're doing what the law is saying. Like, that's why we're showing you everything about the new force. Clearly, we go by the law. If you say pay this, we pay it. If you say do this, we do it. We did it. We submitted. We submitted you, it. You to submitted e it to who? EC. The Electoral Commission. Yes, all the documents. And then we paid the first money to say that, okay, you can become a political party, uh, but we're going to give you uh, a provisional license. Mm -hmm. Okay? And then you go for the rest of the constituencies, which is our 177 districts that we have to also create more offices, which we are ready and we, we have it in motion already. Now, when we did that, the clause says that they would reply after seven days. Mm -hmm. Every time we have gone back there to ask, they say that uh, they were doing something, they were waiting for this. How long ago was it? Oh, it's been two, three months. And then... Three months. Yeah, what I hear the most that worries me is um, uh, orders from above. <laughs> In so many of the things... No, the from, electoral commission is telling you orders uh, from above. No, somebody would tell my people, but I don't go there myself, okay. that orders from above is saying that, oh, maybe we should wait. Orders from above is saying that we should arrest this, we should keep this. Orders from above saying that we should cancel this. Orders from above. So, you know, we as okay. New Force, we're a little bit confused about the entire national governance, you know, because I feel like there has to be some human rights in there, which mm -hmm. I'm not saying that Ghana... Uh, it's not going by that, but maybe fully they're not doing it mm -hmm. because uh, it's clearly that we're still waiting to be responded to. At least give us that a letter. To, to give the provisional license. Yes, give us a letter. We wrote again and okay. then we asked them that, you know, the, the time has passed and please respond. And we still haven't. So we are okay. We are just going with the movement. It's an independent. However, if the country wants to grant us a certificate or alliances to become a political party, we will, we will go into it. We will go into that dimension. We would look for the people. We will build the cabinet. We will do the things that has to and be but, done. And you've gone through the process of submitting all the documents to the Electoral Commission yes. as we speak, awaiting, and, and all of this started with a dream it last also, year. It started with a dream, and okay. it's, it, for me, it's a calling. It's a calling. Yeah, it's a calling. But let's talk about Shalima yeah. Abusi. Why did you decide to have a Belgian be your spokesperson when you want to run for president for Ghana? Because what I understand is that this decision you communicated a few days ago is one you've been nurturing for the last, what, number of months. Yeah. So why that decision? Thank you very much for asking me this question because I've never had a platform to explain myself to Ghanaians, why would I use a Belgian? So in the beginning of the new force with a mask and everything, we have been speaking to people, so many people to join us to do this, to do that, to do that. But today, I want to be able to tell the nation and yourself and people who are watching, we tried so many people to be the spokespersons. They were all scared. They didn't want to use you their mean face. Ghanaians? Yes, they didn't want to use their face. We were struggling, Alfred. And I want to, today, I want to use this to tell Ghanaians that my doors are open. Anything you can do, you're welcome to come and help us. But they all refused. They all oh. refused. So, Shalima... What was the reason behind their refusal? When you approach they, people, what did they tell they, you? I think it's either they were scared that, okay, you're not in power. There's someone in power. If I show my face, I can, you know. So, mm -hmm. th that's the kind of you know, uh, feeling I was getting from the people. You know, some people nodded to it, but I never heard, we never heard from them again. Mm -hmm. So Shalima was a girl that had been in this country for three years. She already worked for GH1. She's a presenter. She's a model. She's a presenter. Yes, she's a model and a presenter, a TV presenter. She worked for GH1. She's I been see. on television in Ghana. She has been going up and down in the country for three good years. Before I met her, I only met her at Mepe, 
when we went to do the donation you there. You mean Mepe? Mepe, sorry. And she was also there to do a donation. And I met her I uh, through uh, Honorable Ablakwa. So that's how I met her. Oh. And then we started talking after. And so she... she so it was just four months ago? Yes, months yes. Ago. So she asked what she can do for us when she found out about the movement and what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And I said, um, well, maybe you can speak for us because we're not getting anyone to do it at this point. But we want to be able to send a message out there as a new force. So she volunteered to do it. I see. It's good you underscore the fact that you, do, you, you don't have any experience in politics because for, for some political analysts and political marketing strategists, that was a, a very clear disconnect with the kind of resonance that you wanted your ambitions to have with the Ghanaian people, having somebody else speak for you. And then it eventually turning out that this person had some questions to answer with respect to the law. Did you do any background checks on, on the lady? Yes, we did. We did. And, our, and what did you find? We did a KYC. But just before I answer that, I will go back to um, how the perspective that people had for me when they saw me using her. And I can understand the nation. You know, when you go back to our history, what white people have done in the past and all of that, you know, it's sometimes you, you, you just dislike the fact that a white person is coming to our country to do something, something. But I just want the country to also understand that, you know, we're one. There are a lot of white people here. There are a lot of Chinese people. There are a lot of people in this country, you know, who are even doing worse things. But, you know, for me, I just thought that a movement that mm -hmm. is not politically registered, okay, mm -hmm. one, can have a reporter. A reporter is not necessarily a politician. Also, was she a reporter or a spokesperson? Yeah, two different things. Well, a reporter as a spokesperson. So we called, had her to come and report our, our news to the people. But she was described as a spokesperson. Absolutely. That was the title they put on her. So okay. she, she was not officially the spokesperson of the new force? Uh, I, w I still don't want to retract from that as the spokesperson or the reporter, but I'm just letting you know that as a spokesperson, the scope of work that we expected her to do was to report things for the new force. So you can see that she reported the billboards being vandalized. Mm -hmm. She reported, you know, we as a young people coming up, you know, to govern the nation and to add value and all of that. So that's, that's, that's that side. But to answer the second part, the KYC was done on her. Okay? Mm -hmm. And the KYC said that she had a student visa and the visa was in her passport when we checked. Mm -hmm. Okay? So that visa is authentic but from the, from the, from the immigration. The Ghana Immigration Service itself says that she obtained the student's permit by fraudulent misrepresentation. I understand that. It's just the same thing like how you were just saying that we used a uh, black star line to go uh, and do oh, our well, event there. We but then the, the truth is there, like you can see other receipts. So we knew that there is a student visa. Mm -hmm. She has been coming in and out of the country for mm -hmm. three years. So okay. we knowing her for four months cannot be responsible for her in and out of this country. Of course, she must be doing the right thing to be coming into the country. She must be taking visas to come into the country. So we already checked that. It was authentic. And the way the whole thing happened, you know, first it was they called her. And then second, we send a lawyer there. But when we send the lawyer, the lawyer said that uh, they want her herself. When she went, that was it. We never saw her again for seven days. No mm -hmm. change of clothes, nothing. Kept her in the black room with mosquitoes. That's what she said. That's what she's going through. I mean, in fact, she told us that she's about to, to release uh, or, or the broken silence of whatever happened in that seven days. So in the next two days, we, I was okay with it. I thought that I am responsible to have put her in that situation because mm -hmm. when she got into the immigration and they sent her to BNI, we realized that the case is beyond immigration. And then the lawyer started saying that they're interrogating her for the new force. Okay. That's what the lawyer told you. Yes, that's the lawyer that they're interrogating her for the new force, thinking that that's it's, her lawyer. In this case, yes, her lawyer. Francis Xavier Sosu. No, it wasn't. Then it wasn't. It, then it wasn't it was, Sosu. Yes, it was a different uh, lawyer because okay. I was not even in the country when I heard that, and right. I just asked that maybe they should get a lawyer to support her. So they found a lawyer that's supposed to be good at human rights. But when I found out that after two days that she was supposed to be released, they were sitting down with a lawyer. But all of a sudden, they whipped her from the BNI and left the lawyer behind and took okay. her to court. And for some reason, she was not charged. 
But the judge said that you're on bail, but we're going to have to keep you for five days to investigate. 20,000 cities bail? No, 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 no. No, that wasn't the bail. That was the second day, the two mm -hmm. days. And then it went, they, they didn't have a charge, but they kept her for five days. So this is why I think, you know, the words of saying kidnapping, because that is, there was no charge. There was nothing and no one. The lawyer went in, they did the right thing, asked, and they gave her the bill. So she came out. When she came out, that's when the lawyer demanded for the forged documents mm -hmm. that made her get the visa. That forged document was not produced. Then it reported to the court. When she reported to the court, they dropped off. No, that, that was the demand. And because they couldn't provide it, I think that might be the reason why they had to drop the case. Because they had the charges on the seventh day against her that she's used fraudulent documents to mm -hmm. attain the visa which is original in the passport. So we wanted to know that provide that fraudulent document that you're saying, you know, acquire that visa. And then they couldn't. They couldn't for four days before the court. And they still dropped the case. They dropped the case and said, go. But then she got arrested again, got arrested, and then took to BNI. Okay. And no one saw her again. She did not get her properties. Even if you're going to deport someone, their properties belong to them. You need to give it to them. She did not do anything, nothing, no money, nothing, no card, nothing. And they just pushed her on a plane and left. So myself, I didn't get to see Shalima to say, I'm sorry for all of this humiliation I've caused you and all of this problem. You know, mm -hmm. and she just left and went. So I had to go and apologize to the parents because I feel responsible. Her you parents know, are still in Ghana. Oh, they left. They oh, left. They left that, yeah. Okay, but well, we've got to round up. There are a number of people, and it's good you give this clarity. So Thank you. Let's move. On. There are a number of people who have gone on this path that you want to travel on. They have a dream. They want to be president. You know, some even form political parties, and then that dream just fizzles out because obviously the Ghanaian people don't connect with whatever vision that they have. I want you to speak to that. That reasoning the vision that gives you confidence that you are the right man for the people what are you going to be doing differently thank you. Round up thank you so i believe that we all have a great opportunity to live life and it's a great present from god okay mm -hmm. uh but i am not the type that believe in life so much i've surrendered my life to the omnipotent power in the universe but what i have that i respect so much is my time and i think the time is the real gift that i have i believe that in my time i have to do all the things that i envisioned you know all the things that i dream of all the things that i think i can do to impact society you know there are people who want to chase money and when you chase riches when you when, when you chase riches you leave a bill mm -hmm. you know when you chase wealth you leave a will but when you chase your destiny you definitely, uh, when you change your destiny, you're definitely going to leave a legacy. Mm -hmm. So for me, I have crossed the path of riches, building wealth, and I've now entered the door of legacy. And I think it's my time to impact that. I wouldn't be able to be saying what I'm saying or doing what I'm doing when I'm 60. And I know that right now I have the energy, I have the spirit, I have the power, you know, I have the passion, I have the concentration to do these things. And I want to be able to advise people that, look, people might have tried and failed, but people have to keep trying. Some people will get it at the, at the time, at, within a time frame. Some okay. people may be decided at the wrong time. Some people thought of it at the time they could have done it, but they waited and tried to do it later and it didn't work. Okay. I am the man that thinks that when the time is the time, I go for it. I, 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 I work with timing. And I, I want to tell the nation also that, look, I'm not someone that is running around trying to sell some political vision to become a president, okay? I, I'm not a politician. I am a risen leader, okay? Mm -hmm. And you can tell from the things that I've done. You know, I'm in my 40s, but I've managed to create landmarks in the country. I've managed to invest. I'm building industrial platforms. I'm doing things that would change us from having a 92% importation into the country, which is really extracting our economy into other people's country, and then balance it with the power of exportation. 
by making sure that the manufacturing and industrialization level makes the world need that so we can become a part of the global economy. Now, I can do this with or without. And I can do this by being either the president or still being the private sector. Mm -hmm. The only thing that I think needs to happen to make this happen easily is that we need emergence. We need emergence, a straight support from the government, and a direct input from the private sector. Not for us to rather look at the government as the private sector, and we, the private sectors, are looking up to the government to give us a contract before we do something. No. We have to start building skills. We have to start building industrializations, factories. There are so many people who are leaving universities. They need jobs, you know, and we need to create those jobs. It's happening in China. It's happening in America. It's happening in Dubai, everywhere. You have to create jobs. And so our mission of coming in here is to create a middle class economy. This middle class economy will put us on an international standard development. Okay, people will start to see that the average person is getting an okay. average wage. Now, now Kwame Bedia come for president 2024. Now, thank you for coming. Thank you. And um, this is not the end of the conversation we're going to be having because we want to be president December 7. We'll have you again. <laughs> you have to talk again. Thank you. Anytime thank you. I can be, I will be here. Um, and we do appreciate your time. Thank you very we, much. We're going to leave with a video uh, that your team prov put, put together as yeah. well. So, yeah, that's the man behind the mask. Now he's been unveiled, so you know. The Nana naked Kwame truth. Bidiakun, the man behind the mask on the billboards you see in town. Are you going to pull down the, the, the mask or you, you leave them there? Oh, I'm, I'm sure they already know the mask and they already know the man. Thank you. And my name is Alfred Okansi, and New Day continues.